Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this week's Weekly D and today we're talking about sustainable pole fashion because people always ask why pole sets are expensive and I wanted to get down to the bottom of it and I wanted to talk to someone who would know. So I invited my friend Kim who runs Pole Hog, which is a UK based pole brand. Really excited for you to hear this episode. So without further ado, this is the Weekly D because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least be getting it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any, if you want some tea, then come and join Dan up on the weekly D. It's the weekly D. Hey Kim, thank you so much for coming onto my podcast. I know you're a little bit nervous about doing this, but honestly, don't be nervous because like, this is just going to be like a fun little chit chat. We're just going to have some fun. So like, I just want to talk to you and get all your knowledge and learn more about pole hog and what you do and stuff. So for anyone... For anyone who doesn't know you or know who Pole Hog is, can you just give us like a brief sort of like what you do, where you're from, what your business is? Give us a little blurb about you. Okay, so, um, well, we're just, um, I don't know, it's really hard because we're just who we are, you know. Uh, Well, I I think the easiest thing is to tell you how we started. That is the easiest way. So, um. I just had a baby and I was a little bit larger than I used to be and I really really didn't stick to any sort of fitness nothing nothing really worked and then I seen some pole dance classes advertised so I was like okay well you know it sounds a bit different sounds a bit fun we'll go to that so I started to go in um at Alford in Skegness um and it was fantastic it was so good I, just so much fun and I was like yeah yeah I really want to go and then like it turned into going every single week without fail and then seeing everybody and they were all turning up in their pole clothes and I was like oh I really want some I want to match everybody else you know and then I went online to find some and bearing in mind I was size 16 at the time I was like well can't find anything like over a size 10 what's going off you know Wow. So it was like what, really what disheartening. Year was that? What year was um, that? I don't know. I think we've been going about we've been going about seven or eight years now. So it was like quite a while ago. Right. If you could right. find anything, it was so expensive. It's like you know. Are we talking like bad kitty era? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So we're talking like quite a while ago. Yeah, it was <laughs> quite a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh, it was like it was so hard. You couldn't find anything and. If you could, it was like silly money, you know. So I was like, oh, well, you know, what am I going to do? I can't find anything to wear. So this is where my other half comes into it, Mr. Paul Hogg. I said to him, right, if I get you some fabric, can you make something? He's like, well, you know, I used to make car seats and stuff like, you know, stuff put on like modified cars and stuff. I was like, I'm sure I can make you some, make some pants. So I bought the fabric um, and then... He made me some, and I took him to pole class, and uh, everyone was like, oh, my God, they're fantastic. Like, how have you got, how have you got pole pants? And then it sort of escalated because I sold them at the pole class, and I came back, and I was like, oh, you need to make me another pair. So it was like, um, why? Like, well, I kind of sold them. And this kind of escalated from there, and, like, it's like within, like, you know, a three or four weeks, I'd, like, sold all these pants, and I'd still got no pants for myself. Um, and, like, within a month of that, we'd got a website, we've got everything, and we're shipping internationally. It just went crazy. It was, like, it was chaos, honestly. So so his background was doing sewing, but for, like, custom cars or something, was it? For the cars? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't something, um, I don't know, it wasn't something that he... He, he did for a job is he, he what, what it was is he had a car um, and he used to spend a lot of money on it and he couldn't find any seats so he bought himself a sewing machine and he made them and then somebody else wanted some and you know he did a bit he did a bit like that a bit bit the same really but he never really he never really made millions of them it was just you know for his mates and stuff so obviously he'd got this sewing machine so I told him to crack it out and <laughs> make me a pair of pants and Paul Hogg was born 
That is amazing. It was crazy. Where did the, where did the name Pole Hog come from? So, um, it's a difficult one because we don't actually, we do, I say we don't actually know. There's a little bit of a disagreement between me and Jessie because um, my daughter used to, I used to have a pole in the house, obviously, and my daughter used to dance on the pole. And I'd like, well, come on, Bella, let me have a go. So she's just hogging the pole. But Jessie swear blinds that she said it. So, you know, it's one of those it's things. But that, that's where it came from, basically, was that my daughter stole the pole all the time. And for anyone who's listening who isn't from the UK, just in Sorry. case you don't use that expression, <laughs> we pole hog is, well, it's a brand now in the UK, obviously, owned by Kim. Um, but a pole hog would be someone who's like, yeah, just hogging the pole. Like, they just won't let you go on the pole. They're being a pole hog. So it's just kind of like a fun little play on words. I assume they probably say that in the US and stuff as well in Canada. But, yeah, just in case anyone's just like, what the hell is a pole hog? Because you know how, like, some people call a hog like a pig, right? So yeah. you're just like, I didn't want anyone thinking that it was some weird name about, like, pole <laughs> pigs or something weird. You know what I mean? But um, so the reason why I always taught you is because I feel like um, – a lot of people want to know why pole clothing is so expensive. And obviously one of the things that Pole Hog is known for is for providing more affordable pole wear. I wear Pole Hog because it's one of the better ones in terms of fit for me for men's shorts. Um, I actually bought some last night. Did you see? I did an order last night. Oh. <laughs> so I did a little order last night because... Um, so it's really funny, actually. I was about to perform my showcase the other day, and my instructor um, says to me, I, I bent down to get something, and she turned around to me, she's like, Dan, you've got a hole in your crotch, in your in your pole shorts. <laughs> Babe, I've had these pole shorts for, I, I don't know, maybe even six years. No, probably yeah. not, but maybe like five years. I just love them. I'm always wearing them. I was like, oh, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> then Mitch pulls out a pair of my shorts that I literally wore yesterday. He was like, Dan, you've made a hole in these ones as well. It's where I wear them all the time. Oh, so I'm like, going doing. To, like shorts. But it's just where I wear them all the time. So obviously yeah. where you're doing splits and stuff, the crotch is kind of like the first thing to go, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, tell you what, though, those shorts have bloody lasted me. And I like them because they're affordable. They're not too expensive. Yeah, yeah. So was affordability one of the – not just, obviously, the sizing, but was affordability something that you had in mind at the time or was just affordability that something that came with it? Um, I suppose yes and no. I w our aim was to, to to source fabrics where we could make it affordable, but it wasn't technically the main aim, so to speak. Um, but it became more of an aim to keep it affordable for people. Yeah, as people were struggling, you know, they still wanted to go to class because that was their only point in in their week that they would actually see somebody and have a laugh with their friends and you know meet have, have a meet up so it became more of a, a thing for affordability rather than the main aim um but yeah you know yeah it's it's a, it's a tough one i mean do you think I mean, I won't say any names because I feel like to say names would be really unprofessional. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. You know, there are brands within the pole industry um, that do charge. I mean, I've seen like some sets that are like over a hundred, like for like top and bottom. Yeah. Um, is this? Do you feel like it's a justified price? Be honest, because you know, are some of them like because. A lot of the brands always tend to say, like, we don't make actually a lot of money on these yeah. clothing. Yeah. And it, even though it seems expensive, we don't make a lot of money from it because... The I cost believe every single word, like, yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. So tell me more about that. Like, how? what's the most expensive part? So I would say that you say, obviously, that you've seen sets that are over £100. Um, mm. Now, it's not so bad if you are doing things like that on... A large scale manufacturing process, you know, so that's not too bad because everything gets switched from every, everybody has a job and everything gets switched from machine to machine. So it makes the process of making that garment really, really quick. If right. you gave me that and said, Can you make me this? There is no way that under minimum wage that we would be able to make that in that time. 
that's that's the thing, you know, it, it's it's time. It's the time that things take to make. And pe- this right. is what people don't take into consideration. You think, oh, well, mm. it's only, a, you know, it's only a little bit of fabric. What's But when you're spending hours and hours making a, a set and you look back and it's like you've sold that set for £30 or £35, it doesn't cover your wages, let alone right. any materials. And that's why polware is expensive is because you're paying for people to make it. Right. Over here. Over right. Okay. Yeah, and over that's here. another little topic that yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. So you don't get any of your stuff made in China, no? No, not everything's made here, everything. It's all made if you in put Paris. an order in, if you put an order in, this is where it starts. Here, from fabric. Then we'll take the order. Obviously we design all our own patterns, everything is all drawn up from scratch. Um and then obviously it goes to be cut out, everything's cut out by hand, nothing is you know nothing's like bulk made or anything like that your order Mm. will be in front of me i will cut it out and then i'll take it over to the machine make sure it's got the right color threads on and then it'll be made and i'll take it over check it pack it post it and how long would you say like a top and bottoms pole set what's turnaround how how quickly can you do one it depends what it is and what fabric it is oh really yeah like if you're doing velvet average um, I don't know. I could probably do one in about thirty minutes. Oh, what top and bottom? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I remember Mr. Polehog. Um, what is his actual name? I've only ever called Ronnie. Mr. <laughs> Ronnie, that's it. Yeah. Um, I remember Ronnie telling me once that he's got it down to such an art now that yeah. he can literally yeah. just whip out a pair of bottoms like super quick. He could do it. So um, he could do it a lot quicker. Uh, but we had to do it. We had to get it down to that precision to be able to actually make profit from the business because we are so cheap. I hate saying that word, cheap, cheap. But, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, <clears throat> do you, that's the thing, like, you charge, like, that's the thing, I wouldn't necessarily say as, like, it's cheap as such, it's just, like, affordable. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like, it's not too expensive now. I think there was a period where you were too cheap. I don't know if you remember that, that you were cheaper than you are now. And I remember thinking, like, fucking hell, like, how the hell are they even, like... Oh, no, that's the but, sales. That's the sales. So that was that was basically um, anything that we'd, we'd made to um, take to shows and stuff like that. Mm. Um, if we go and we got back from the show, whatever we had left over, I would just sell off, just so it wasn't just sat around in boxes. So oh. they... We sold everything at probably cost price, you know, if not losing out a little bit. Right. But it stopped stopped from being stood around because we had so many fabrics and everything was so fast paced, we couldn't have yeah. stuff lying around because that fabric was gone. You didn't think about like just saving it all for another show and just seeing if it sold at another show instead. It just depends how many shows that we did. Yeah. You know, if we've got if we've got, you know, like two or three planned, we could we could keep the more technical items back because it takes obviously takes time to replace them but and it was fun it was fun <laughs> doing yeah. the, you know the massive sales yeah, but yeah they they used to be like three same. or four people in the background like passing me stuff and i'm like right go on go on <laughs> yeah yeah i remember Safe saying that like, whenever you did like the, the sales of the clothing and stuff i always remember seeing people go freaking mad for it like all in the comments <laughs> and stuff like i want it i want it yeah <laughs> so um with regards to, like, if someone came up to you and said, like, Kim, why is pole clothing so expensive? What is your generic answer for it? Time and fabric. It's... How, how yeah. expensive is the fabric to source? So it depends what you use. There is loads and loads and loads on the market that you can get, and it is cheap. But, like you just said, like, you've had a pair of shorts that have lasted five years. If you buy cheap fabric, they ain't going to last. They're not going to last five years. Right. All our fabric is branded Italian Lycra. So it all comes from Italy. It's all imported, which is obviously Brexit, a massive thing. Um, oh, but it is all yes. come from, it does all come from Italy and it is all branded um, Italian Lycra. There is a very, very big brand that uses the exact same velvets as us and they charge quite a lot more. And they're in the EU as well, actually, I think. Right. But so, and actually, how did that affect you in terms of the like, whole like Brexit thing? Like, oh, Brexit, so, absolute nightmare, nightmare. I was going to say, it must have really screwed with the sales now. Yeah. Well, yeah, 
fabric went up insanely, you know, um, to get stuff over here, you know, it's, it, it's ridiculous, ridiculous money. Um, but then again, it was also the customers because we ship worldwide and we had so many customers in the EU. And so obviously when that all occurred and they started getting huge charges, obviously our sales dropped massively. And it's, it's right. really sad because, you know, I used to talk to a lot of them quite regularly just for a chit chat. But now, you know, you don't you don't talk so much because they don't order. No, of course. So, yeah, it's a massive hit. So, so what happened, like, did them... Because I know, obviously, like, Pole Junkie, a different sort of business model because they don't actually yep. have their own, like, branded stuff, of course. But, like, you know, did you did you ever consider, like, having... Yeah, I guess, like, because they ended up getting a, a site in Europe, didn't they? So yep. they keep yeah. their stuff there. I mean, what were the options for you? Are there any options like that even available? Or not really, I guess um, I suppose. I mean, there was, like, quite a few of our customers in um, the Netherlands, they wanted a message because they wanted to um, set up selling our stuff in the Netherlands. So we would have had to have um, somehow got them to them and then they could have, you know, done whatever, you know, set up their own website uh, or whatever. But then it's the shipping costs, isn't it? It's the shipping. It's You're in, you're in yeah. the same situation. It's getting right. it. It's getting it over there. So it's I don't know. I think we kind of... Surely it doesn't avoid the fact that they'd still have to pay the exactly. import tax. Yeah, I mean, so literally with the Polos merch as well, we got completely screwed by it because obviously it's just merchandise. So people are only buying it because it's a cute top that says, I don't know, feels bigger than your dick or whatever on it. So it's just a funny top. You don't mind paying 20, 25 quid for it, but when you get these import charges on top, you're like, oh, but that was way more than what I would have wanted to spend. Yeah. So yeah. then what we ended up having to do is getting our stuff made in Europe and being shipped to people. So yeah. they weren't having to pay that. Um, but the problem is, is that because obviously not everyone knows that we have changed this new company, it's like people are just assuming they're going to get these charges. But it, luckily, Polos is just a side hustle. But obviously this is a full-time job for you. So like how, how much did it affect you? Like, Did you get close to having to close or did that ever become a thing um, I don't know this is why this I suppose this is why Mr Polhog isn't here so much anymore is because we have took a massive hit on on sales especially like international um so it doesn't warrant two people being here all the time bills okay. bills still have to be paid don't they um because we keep right. our prices so low we don't we don't really make that much of a profit you know right. we don't we don't have fancy cars or fancy houses and stuff like that we, that wasn't the intention you know anyway but it's never it's never been about you know making millions of pounds you're never going to do it yeah I mean it's funny because I think people assume that there are brands out there that are do you think any of the big brands are making like bank <laughs> on these these designs and stuff do you know what I mean they have to be they have they, they have to make profit or they wouldn't do it um, of course, yeah. To a, to an extent, I mean, we are at the moment. We we just stick over. We relied on um, being able to produce so much so quickly. Very little profit, but we sold quite a bit of it. So that was that was the way that ticked us over. Um, but obviously, mm -hmm. we had Brexit. They've got all the um, interest rates rising, everything rising. But we really haven't increased our prices. Pretty much since we started, maybe a pound here and there, but we've never really increased our prices. So it's really, it's really difficult, and I do feel for everybody in the industry because if they're having to, especially if they're having to import clothing into this country to then sell for it to be shipped back out, I can understand why a pole set can cost a hundred pound and you know, and, yeah. and more. Yeah, I mean, I think the cost of everything has gone up anyway, obviously, the cost yeah, positives and all that stuff. But, like, you know, so the cost of everything has gone up. And I think, do you think people are just, like, because they're tied with their money, they're just less willing to spend so much? Do you think companies like, I don't know how you pronounce it, whether it's Shine or Shein or whatever it is, are companies like that really having an effect, do you think, on poll yes. companies? Most Tell me definitely. More about that. Most definitely. Um, I mean, there is no way when they're selling, you know, a, a pair of bottoms for six pound, we can't, we couldn't even get the fabric in 
for that amount of money, let alone, you know, be able to make it and sell it and make and make some sort just because okay. they're making so many. Is it, yes, is because it's, so many? it's mass production and it's being made in countries where they don't have to make so much money. They, they don't have to pay their workers so much money. So that's that's how they make it so cheaply. When people yeah. are being paid one and two pound a day and, you know, and they're, they're, they're able to, to buy, you know, they, well, they, a lot of them make their uh, fabric over there. So the costs are very, very low for them to produce yeah. it. So they can sell it cheap, whereas if you're buying something here, you know, you've, you've got to take into consideration that the fabric isn't made here. It has to be shipped from Italy. We mm -hmm. have to get it in. We have to make the stuff. We've got electric lighting and stuff like that. It's all so much more money here than what it is over there, and that's yeah. how they can afford to do it. For sure. So, yeah, yeah it's a massive, massive impact on, you know, people like us. I guess it's just lucky, really, that they're not providing actual pole sets. So what people are yeah. buying aren't always necessarily perfect. Because obviously, yeah. like, the, I don't know if you, what do you call it, the gusset area? Like, is yeah, yeah, called? Or, yeah. like, the crotch area? Yeah, it's gusset. not as wide. So for things like splits and stuff, it might not be as suitable. Um unless you've got like a really small pussy, in which case you might be absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, some of the big pussy bitches, they need the extra large gusset and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, I am. Um, it's I, not I, just I've that. I think like, a lot of people talking about this like shine and stuff. I think, as, I think to be fair, like the world, of, we are turning into a throwaway society. And I think people are more like, well, I can get that for three pound it once and throw it in the bin mm. and and i think that's a massive issue as well you well, can't huge. you know, you know like, the, like wastage yeah yeah the amount of, you know like whereas our stuff is made to last we make it to last the amount of people that i've seen that are pole, posting pole sets for sale and i remember we we sold out of that fabric years ago and they are, you know, they're still selling, they're still selling. Oh, it was the old tags or something. And we only had the old tags for a year. So that's seven years ago. Right. You know, and they're still selling them. And they are in perfect condition. Mm. It's, it's Which is really laugh. a testament to, like, the quality, isn't it? You know, it's like um, I've had some brands before where the quality is just shit or the material yeah. is just thin and horrible yeah. or, like, it... You know, in those materials, like they, it's like a stretch, but they stretch so much that it almost goes a little mm -hmm. bit see through. Yeah. Um, not obviously completely, but enough where you can kind of see a bit. See everything. Like you can see where it stretched so much, it's gone a little bit see through. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I mean, that's testament really to Pole Hog, really, because you always do really, really good quality, which is why I always wear it. And because it always just fits me quite well, so I quite like it. Um, hey, what's up, everyone? Sorry to interrupt your podcast. I just wanted to come on and tell you really quickly about one of our sponsors for this podcast, which is Superfly Honey. So tell me, do you want to be Superfly Honey? Well, honey, of course you do. <laughs> well, if you want to be Superfly, you need to make sure you get yourself some Superfly Honey grip leggings. Now, Superfly Honey specialise in these grip leggings that you may have seen all over Instagram at the moment. Everybody's wearing them. And these are great for anyone who like to just keep themselves a little bit more covered up. Maybe you're polling in a cold country and you need some extra grip because your skin just isn't giving you the grip you need. Well, Superfly Honey have got you covered with their grip leggings. Now, they told me to give an honest review, and I did have a pair sent to me, and I can tell you the only thing that was sad about them was that the pair they sent me didn't fit me. <laughs> they were too small, and they were too short because I needed their tall range. So if you're like me, and you're a tall bitch too, guess what? They've got their own tall range. They obviously just didn't realize that I was a six-foot glamazon, so they sent me their tall range and now I have one of their tall pairs of leggings and they fit so snug there's no movement on them I didn't feel like they were going to cause any friction they were super tight to the legs so they felt really comfortable and for any of you out there who like to stay covered up these are amazing for you and definitely an option to try out so go and check out super fly honey what about competition like there's a lot more competition within the um the industry now like do you feel the pressure of that like are you noticing that it's making it more um 
what's the word? Like, it's because it's so saturated now. Do you think it's just a harder market to get into because there's so many companies making polware? Yes, yes, it is. It, it is very hard. I mean, like I say, Mr. Paul Hogg doesn't come in as many days because he has to go out and earn a living. Um, because it is, it is really, really hard. I mean, there's people out there and they are making stuff in the UK and they are making technical fancy items and they're selling it for a lot cheaper than what we would because they have a full-time job. They're just doing a little bit on the side, you know, just mm. to make a few quid here and there. And that that is what, like, is really hard for us because there's no way that we could be able to do that, you know, and cover a wage and cover the costs of running it. So, yeah, things like that are really, really hard. But do you think about, though that stuff like do you think stuff like that though really lasts for very long? Because it's that whole thing of like yeah, you know they're like oh I love making you because I I know exactly yeah. the people you're talking about. You know the people yeah. are like oh I've got a sewing machine I love just making clothes. Does anyone want a pair of pole bottoms? I'll make you some. And then you know they'll do like twenty sets whatever. They'll be so fun. They'll be like oh I made a little bit of extra cash. And then they'll start realizing that it's taking hours of their time. And then the price starts to go up because they're like. Actually, if I'm going to do this, I want to be paid more because this just is not worth my time. Do you know when what I mean? When the price goes period. up is 100% is when they start selling to their not friends and they have to deal with customers. That's when the price goes up, when they realise how much work is involved in actually taking an order from someone. I, I feel that's when the prices goes up. I take my hat off to anybody that fair. wants to buy. You know, you know, if, if anybody wants to try it, fantastic. They're in for hard, hard work. But yeah, I think mm. it's it's not a bad thing. It's funny because I remember thinking about at one point. So obviously we sell the merch, but I was thinking like, oh, it could be really cool to like sell some pole clothes, like actual pole mm. sets. And I remember doing like some research before I even thought about it, and I looked into the industry and I just thought, Do you know what, like. This is such a fucking hard market to get into anyway. Yeah. And we're such a small industry. Yeah. So like with so many competitors that are already at a sort, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like and what's the point? And you know, yeah, go on, what are you gonna say? You Sorry. find like you find like as well, um, like um what people are into at the time as well changes really, really quickly. Um mm. literally into weeks, you know, like so two weeks you'll be doing anything that's a thong. Anything that's boobs out, anything, you know, revealing. And then next week, you know, or two weeks down the line, the same people are saying, right, I need coverage, I need full coverage. Get your fabric and just wrap it round. I want as much coverage <laughs> as possible. It changes so quickly as well. So it's like yeah. bringing out designs and stuff. The amount of hours it takes into actually designing, you know, how something's going to fit. You've got to, you've got to test it. You've got to make it. You've got to try it. You know, and then go back, make your adjustments, try it all again, and then the next week you've done you've done all that. But then the next week, everybody's like they're not into that anymore. They want this, and you know, it's so it's so fast paced in what people are wanting. I guess it's just like fast fashion, isn't it? But yeah. in a smaller yeah. scale, like yeah. you know, these smaller companies that are making. Yeah, you know, I mean, even Hella. I mean, Hella is a big company, you know, but they're having to that they're still small in terms of yeah. brands right so yes they're big for the pole industry but they're still a small brand do you know what i mean yeah and the rate that harrier has to keep up fucking hell i don't know how she does it yeah. i literally yeah. do not know how she does it literally she'll do a launch and the next minute she's ready she's thinking of the next launch so you right, have I mean, to be you have to be ahead you just have people to be ahead. constant yeah people just constantly need that new thing like it's so funny though but you know, it sounds really sad, but I've got the same, well, apart from now, because I had to throw two of them away and I've just ordered some more. But, you know, <laughs> I've just, um, you know, I've just bought some new pole shorts, but those pole shorts will last me a good few years, probably. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I don't really buy pole clothes that often, but also because there's not much available for men. I mean, what's your thoughts around, like, men's pole clothing? Like, again, it must just be so niche for you guys that it's probably not really worth your time, is it? Well, um... It is because the whole obviously the the whole reason that we started was because I wanted to, everybody to feel comfortable. I felt uncomfortable because I didn't have the right attire. I didn't. I didn't. I wanted the same as everybody else, you know. So it doesn't matter whether we sell one pair or we sell twenty thousand pairs. Mm -hmm. To us, it's worth doing it because that one person can go to a class and feel amazing and feel like everybody else. 
you know, and that that's 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 what it's about for us. Um, the male stuff when we first started doing it, it was we'd sell one and then we'd sell two and then we wouldn't do any more for another three or four months or you know now we are getting a lot more regular people that are ordering Absolutely. because they're telling their friends and they're seeing you know they're seeing that they can they can buy something from us and it's the fact that you know they could look at the website and be like oh well i really like that fabric but you haven't got it on your website can you do it for me yeah of course we can yeah yeah, that's one thing I like. I mean, I, this time I just, when I went and bought, I just literally just bought some of the ones that were already on there. But I know, yeah. obviously, I can always message you and be like, Kim, I want this fabric, please, yeah. for these yeah, stores. Yeah, can do that. You know, I know, yeah, exactly. And I like, I like that it's a smaller company where it's quite personal touch, you know, where people can stay yeah. in contact with you. Um, do you ever have any run-ins with that? Because when you're a smaller size company, and obviously people feel like they... Oh, how can I wear this? Like, like they have access to you. Do you ever notice that? Like, do you ever get yeah. like people messaging you and being like, "Oh, I've got a problem with this. I just I'd message you on your personal Instagram, your personal." Yeah, so, do you know what I mean? And they just yeah. Do you get issues with that? I had to stop it quite a while ago because uh, I had to say to everybody, "Look, if you want to message, you need to message the page because we do ship international." And I don't mind. I don't mind talking to anybody. I'm like, I will talk to anybody. I'm not bothered. Um, whether it be about pole hog or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the problem was it was international, so it was different times, different times, you know. And I'm getting messages at like three o'clock in the morning. Oh, right. I just want to ask about these pole shorts. I was like, no. Do you, <laughs> so yeah, uh, do that you became hard. Uh, yeah, I used to. Yeah, yeah. So I don't do it no more. <laughs> oh my god! So literally, my, where I'm sat now is my office, right? And um, for years, I've always left my phone downstairs. I always leave my phone downstairs. Yeah, no. I refuse to take it to bed with me. I just, um, it's one of those things, like, I obviously, once I'm asleep, I won't check it. But when I wake up for a pee or something, if I see there's a message on it, I just You've want got to reply open it. to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, it's so annoying. It's so but that's annoying. the thing. I was replying. I was replying 3 o'clock in the morning. My phone would go, ding. I'd be like, oh, oh, oh. So I'd get up and I'd reply to people. And if Ronnie would be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, oh, oh, just give me two minutes. I'm just talking to such and such. So, yeah, I used to literally, like, no matter what time it was, hardly get any sleep because I'd be just constantly replying to people at stupid hours in the morning. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Good for you. Completely changed. That's the only, again, like, downside to being a smaller scale business yeah. is that yeah. people do feel like they have that access to you. And it's just like, as well, you've got a pole hog group, which I'm in, the pole hog, like, Facebook group. Do you yeah. have a lot of work with that? Like, is that a lot? Because people are quite active in there, I find. Um, we've calmed down a little bit now. We don't we don't tend to be, you know, as on it anymore because uh, our, our lifestyles have changed. I mean, since lockdown and, you know, our, our lifestyles have completely changed. So, yeah, I mean, I do try and do, like, competitions and stuff and, you know, for the group members because they're always posting pictures and tagging us and, you know, they're doing their bit. So, you know, it's yeah. nice to give something back. So that was that was the whole point of the group, really, in the first place to, was to give back to people for doing, you know, doing our advertising results. So that's what they're doing. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was, that was the main reason for the group. But then we found, like, it was quite a nice place and people could post, like, literally anything they wanted. And it was, it became a support, you know, more of a support group than actual whole wear group, you know. Right. So we sort of keep that going. But um, yeah, I'm it not. It goes I'm not, crazy I'm not, in there when you have the sales, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but I'm sales, not as active yeah. anymore. Well, if anyone um, isn't in the pole hog group, go and add yourself because they do sales in there. And when they do sales in there, it goes <laughs> freaking crazy. Um, you were saying about like doing sales with stuff from the um, comps and stuff, where you've had stores mm. of comps and stuff. I remember I went to, I think, oh, was it Northern Pole Championships? you remember the one that um, Lisa Oxley used to, right? yeah. what was that called? Yorkshire. Yorkshire Pole Champs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing you there one year, and oh my God, I've never seen so many pole coaches in my life. It was chaos, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, So you're saying that you make all of that just for the show? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is nuts! So there must have been, must have been like a hundred or more. Must more, have been yeah, more, loads than 100, more, loads more than that. Yeah, yeah. It was nuts. There was so many things. Like, um, 
do you, do you do them anymore? Because I haven't noticed you. No, we haven't been for a while. A lifestyle change, I think, is is right. the main reason. I was going to um, ask if it was like you're not making any money off of it anymore, or like we never, we like never that? really, we never really made a lot of money from competitions oh, okay. or anything like that because we sold everything so cheap. It wasn't about making money; it was about getting people aware of who we are, uh -huh. and. That that was the re that was the main reason for doing. It. I mean, we go to a show and we'd end up coming back, and it had cost us thousands of pounds to do it. You know, all the fabric we had staff at the time, so we had you know staff to pay wages to make the stuff, and you know, so we never we never really like made a lot of money from it, but it made us who we were, and it got our word out of who we were. And yeah. a lot of the reason was a lot of people used to say, "Well, we want to try stuff on." It's like, "Well, come to a show." You can try it on there. You know, you know what to order. Everything's all exactly the same size, and if you order online, so uh -huh. it was a good. Do it was you, a good way. Of do you ever think about um, like? Because obviously, you're talking about like like that was like over two hundred pieces and stuff that you had there. Do you ever think about like getting a shitload of it just made in China or someone like that, and just being like, right, we'll get a production factory to make it? Like, does that not? Yeah. Is it obviously? <laughs> I assume because I get, I don't, tell me if I'm wrong, I get kind of like, not a control freak vibe, but like you like to ensure the quality yourself and stuff yeah. and that's why yeah. you make a lot of it yourself. But do you ever think about using a company to make it all for you and then just dispatching it or it just wouldn't work out worthwhile? No, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't do it. There is, I, I wouldn't be happy with it. I know 100%. They, you know, I go shopping. If I go shopping anywhere in town, I will quality assess a garment before I buy it. And I'm a nightmare for it. I can't help it. <laughs> but, but so I, I'm interested to know. So what does what should people be looking out for? So when like if I buy a t-shirt <laughs> and you're like I quality assess it, what do you mean? Like check if there's like holes and stuff. Yeah, it's how it's made. You can tell like obviously it's it's really hard, but you can tell what sort of machine it's been done, how many threads they've used, so how long it's going to last. If it's got safety threads in, safety safety stitches, you know everything. <laughs> Oh my god! I wouldn't even know what a fucking safety stitch looks like. Dude, you know, that is crazy. I love that. So you're literally going around there, like, um, excuse me, does this have a safety stitch in? And the salespeople are like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? yeah. What are you talking about? I have a nightmare for it. Have you Hey, what's up, everyone? So sorry to interrupt your episode. I just wanted to come on really quickly and tell you a little bit about Polos.com. Did you know that we offer international shipping? Well, we've always offered international shipping, but now we're offering it at a much more reasonable price because shipping from the UK is crazy expensive. So we had to do something about it. So now you can get all of our awesome designs shipped to your home at a much more reasonable price. So why don't you go and check out polols.com today? Because if you want a t-shirt that's got a picture of some pole dancing cats on, maybe some pole dancing dogs, maybe you want a t-shirt that says heels bigger than your dick on it, there's something for everyone. So go and check out polols.com today. Let's get back to the episode. Have you ever bought any stuff from Shine? Um, I have, yes, I have. And I'm not going to lie. Like? Um, it was when they very, very, very first started. Um, right. It was okay. I've still got it now. It was, it was just like we was going on holiday, and I wanted something, you know, just like a chuck over thing. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll try it. So I ordered that, and I do still have it. I do still have it in my wardrobe. Um, okay. The fabric quality wasn't that great. The stitching wasn't that great, but it hasn't fell apart, so it did something right. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously, the pricing of it is where people get caught out. They yeah, want yeah. fast fashion, but they can't <clears> afford <throat> the fast fashion. So what they're doing is they're affording it by buying from places like Shine. What do you? What sort of effects do you think Shine are going to have on the pole industry going forward? Do you think that's going to have any effect on? pole brands like lace down the line um i don't know i think um i think you will find like so like a lot of people just starting out in pole they 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 would probably prefer to go down that route because they don't know how long they're going to stay in you know doing pole or you know you know what it's like it's a turnaround they try it once twice yeah. and, and they don't want to come back or then you'll get people that get so addicted mm -hmm. You know, to how it makes them feel that they will stay in the industry yeah. for a lot of years. I think you'll get a lot of people that will start right. out 
will tend to buy the cheap stuff from places like that because they don't know if they're going to stay. And then eventually they will they will order from a polewear company. I do find that quite a lot that, you know, well, this is my first pole, this is my first pole outfit. I've been polling a year now, so I thought it was time. So I think, yes, they will buy from them, you know, at the start. But the more they get into pole, they want that security. The, the moves get harder, you know, you need the coverage. You do. You know, yeah, so. True. Who, who was your first pole set from? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I don't know. I bought it off Susan, Suzanne Colborn. Um, Oh, I, can't remember, I can't remember the name, actually. Oh, it wasn't Susan Colborn. What is it she used to sell? Um, the, the silks, pole silks. Yeah, yeah, but she there was a brand that she used to sell, wasn't there? What was the brand Yeah, but I can't, think, I can't think what Clothing. it was called. But they're not, they're not going anymore, are they? No, no. That was the very first actual set that I bought. Oh, I can't okay. remember what it was called. <laughs> Are there any brands that you you see within the industry now that you think I really like what they're doing or I really like their staff? Oh, there's loads in there. There's loads. You know, I, I, all the fancy stuff that everybody's making now, it's all fantastic. I'd love to have the time to sit down and make some. Um, but, yeah, there's so like much. really intricate, though. That, but this yeah. is why they're expensive. Oh, yeah. And I guess – so this, I guess, is why – People are like, why is this pulse? So it's just a piece of fabric with like a few straps. But I assume just making those straps alone, just to go on the garment stuff, is like an extra however many minutes on top of making the bottoms. And then if it's got a meshy section, they've got to sew the mesh in. All mesh these isn't as things. bad. Straps, straps are a nightmare. They are so hard to make because they have to stay stretchy. You know, so you can't mm. use a solid a solid stitch. And then obviously stay stretchy then it all has to be turned inside out so you can't see the stitching you know and then they all have to be the right correct length so every every length will need will need to change as it shapes around and then you have to do that in every single size yeah yeah so that, that's why we don't do it it's just sheer time the time that yeah. you know the stuff like that takes and we're known for being a cheap brand so if i said to somebody oh well that set's going to cost you 90 pound they were like, no chance, you've got no chance. And that's where I think maybe we've shot ourselves in the foot is that we can't do the fancy stuff because people are used to yeah. our prices and they don't want to pay for it. Well, could you do it as like, have you ever considered having like the sort of like the budget range and then like the luxury range, like a more luxury style, do you know what I mean? It just has yeah. a separate section, just seeing how it goes. It could be, like, make one for Jesse. So if anyone's wondering who Jesse is, by the way, that we're talking about, Jesse is one of Kim's friends. Um, <laughs> and Jesse could wear it, and then a load of people will be like, oh, actually, I really like that. And then maybe more people will, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah I always want, do, you, do you ever think about, like, that with Paul, like, where, where you'd like to take the brand, like, going forward, if there's somewhere that you'd like to take it, like, what would you like to do with it? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't. I just like. I like doing what we do. I like being affordable, and I like you know being the fact that the first person where somebody comes to, well, I, I, I've got big boobs. I can't, you know, I can't find anything to keep me in. Somebody's told me that oh you're the God, place. Yeah. You know that you're the yeah, place, you know to, and that's so what funny. I like. So when people ask me about men's pole clothing, I always say you. But also when bigger girls or girls with big boobs, I'm always yeah. like, go to pole hog because they do bigger sizes and they do stuff for the big titty girls because yeah. I remember there being this whole thread about it once. He was in like a like a group somewhere and everyone was like, oh, big boobs, yes, go to pole hog, go to pole hog, pole hog, pole hog, pole hog. And everyone was like, everyone yeah. go to pole hog. So it's really good that, you know, girls with, because there are quite a lot of pole dancers out there who do have, Big busts. Yeah, they they're, have big boobs. They're a fucking nightmare. Do you know what? It must be a nightmare to keep in a top. They're a nightmare top for me. Very small. <laughs> right, exactly. I can only imagine. Like, what's <laughs> the biggest size that you actually accommodate for with, like, boobs? It's, it's, a, it's a very difficult one because I don't agree with how boobs are measured today either. So, you know, it is, it is, it is, it is a really difficult... Because they're so... It's so varied you know it's like i've been measured at mm. a 32d in one shop and then a 30 double f in another shop there's no way i'm a double f no way on this planet i'm a double f so how does it how do they 
measure it? Like, sorry, I know that's a really stupid question. Maybe so many girls listening to this are probably like, fucking hell, then. But, like, how do you... Do you literally have to get your boobs out and they measure your whole boob? Or is it just they it's just more of it, the chest? So they'll measure an underbust measurement and then an overbust measurement and then work out... It's, it's the maths equation, how they work it out. But, obviously, every single shot okay. tends to measure it completely different. different. So, normally, I get a picture of, like... Can you do anything with these? I was like, okay. <laughs> the amount of boobs that I've seen in my life is is unbelievable. But that's the way that's the that. way it works. Yeah, exactly. But I love that you're creating a brand that is gonna accommodate for people like that. And I think um, yeah. that it's really good that you're doing something like that. Do you ever um with other brands, do you ever get brands copy you? You don't obviously have to mention names, but do you ever get any issues with like yeah. you create a new design yeah. and then a few weeks later you're like, oh, that design yeah. is very similar to the design that we just made. Have you had any yeah. issues with that? It happened at one of your competition shows, actually. <laughs> you know, your oh, competition, really? yeah. We brought out yeah, a new design. design. Yeah, we brought out a new design and then uh, like literally it was like a week later there was somebody else that was doing the exact same design. It's like, oh, my God. Okay. Oh, wait. So, hold on. Someone saw it at Air to the Chrome, yeah. and then yeah. a few weeks later, they, they copied it. I can't say that they copied it, because they might have had that, you know, the same idea in their mind at the same time. I don't know. Oh, that's a, that's a very politically correct answer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, and is there anything you can do to stop shit like that? No. You can't copyright clothing. You can copyright brands. You can copyright names. You can even copyright you know, a design on a fabric or, you know, silhouettes and stuff like that, but you can't copyright or patent an actual pattern of a garment. So say, for example, like Gucci, right? They've got the Gucci bags and they're like yeah. quite distinctively Gucci. Yeah. You're telling me another brand could literally make exactly the same bag and just It's got to have, I think it's, it. um, I think it's five points, I believe. It's like five, there's got to be, there's got to be like so many points difference in this thing but they only have to be right. small points you know so well, i see so they could maybe make the strap just very slightly small yeah and then yeah the bus went, oh god yeah that so sucks, that's that's it? that's how they get around it and that's how they can it's, it's the names if they brand it that's when they have trouble you know we had somebody that was that started up you know it wasn't about like people just starting up and oh i can make you that i can make that they'd clearly taken one of our patterns um copied it, made it, and then they were selling in the style of Paul Hogg. And I was like, you can't do that. So obviously yeah, I had to like... message her and say, you know, you can't you can't use our name. We we own the name. We you know it's 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 branded. We own the brand. So you can't you know if you do if you if you, you know you I, it's clearly that you've taken our garments, taken them apart and done whatever. I said that's okay. If you want to do that, you do that. But you can't sell it in the style of Paul Hogg. She says, well, it, it does say in the style of. I was like, you can't use our name at all when you are making Paul wear. You can't do it. You know, that's, that's nuts. Like, it's crazy. But, oh, so, this, so she she argued it, did she? Yeah, yeah, she was arguing it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is crazy. The thing is, though, is that, you know, there's no integrity to it. So, like, how long does it realistically yeah. last for? Because, like, if you're going to be selling stuff like that in the style of, you know, people are going to call that shit out anyway, first of all. Like, people mm. will call it out, won't they? So it's like, what's the... I just don't really get the point mm. of doing it. It doesn't really... Well, I spotted it, and she was me. doing... She was doing quite a few different brands, actually. So she'd taken, like, quite a few other brands and took them apart and done exactly the same. But obviously, I emailed the other brands and said to them, you know, this is what's happening. This is what I've seen. Obviously, I've spoken to her, but she's she's... You know, she's quite happy that, you know, she's in the right when she's not. So I think it was a case of that everybody had started, like, speaking to her and saying, you know, you can't be doing this. These are This is our stuff. And I didn't see anything from her since. Well, especially not in the style of. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think it took a few people to say. Like, but, but also, it's just been like, why did she even need to say that? Why didn't she just say this is the style? And that's yeah. it. And, like, yeah. if she's going to copy, don't freaking make it so obvious. But that's just yeah. nuts. I mean... What's your your thoughts of where the pole industry is going with regards to pole clothing? Like, where do you think? What's the future you can see for us? Like, what do you think of it? Well, I don't know because it's it's changing so so quickly. I feel like I feel like lockdown was a massive thing, and a lot of people stopped polling. 
so that was like I don't know. It was it was it was like a massive okay. thing for us because there was a lot of our old girls. Yeah, like old, old, yeah, there was older girls that you know they, they said, "Oh, we do, we do this now and we do this now." I was like, "Oh, oh, well, that's a shame." But then you get in the new people that are coming in, you know, and and, yeah. and they're replacing these, and then you it's like starting again. You're having to to constantly start again, and I feel like pole is quite quite a bit of a cycle like that. Uh, you know, the whole right. industry. I mean, this is the thing, like, if you look at people like Deb Riley and, um, you know, Donna Gant, like, the people that they were teaching no, when I they first Donna. started teaching, I love Donna too, but, you know, like, um, when you think about the people that Donna probably taught when she first started teaching, oh, God, none of them are going to be polling anymore. Do you know what I mean? She's probably one of, her and, like, Debs are probably, like, some of the, the last yeah. ones standing from there. I know it sounds really mean to say like, it's like their generation. I don't mean it in that sort of way, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Their generation of pole, the like, their pole life. A lot of the people that were doing they're things, the pole you know, mummies. Those two, and that's what I mean. But like, but yeah. they're kind of like the one, the last one standing. Like, if you think of some of the big names that used to pole around the same time as them, there's not many of them that are still doing it. We are very much like there's only a few names from you know like every year that becomes like a pole dancer that ends up doing it in five or six years time people mm. move on with their lives but the good thing is that we've always got new people coming in and um and that's good are you still doing influencer marketing and using like influencers and stuff to promote your stuff um not so much now i mean um we have like like i say we have like sort of tried to quieten it down a little bit because mm -hmm. it became that our life was literally pole hog. That was it. Everything, day and night. It was literally eat, breathe, you know, sleep, pole hog. So we yeah. have quite a knit down. I mean, um, we recently moved house. We moved from, uh, well, I won't say recently, but it was like during lockdown. Um, and we moved to a little uh, little place that's got a little bit more land. So we now have like a small holding and we're now like trying to be really self-sufficient. We grow all our own fruit and vegetables. I can it all for winter and like proper little that is prepper. Amazing. But, but yeah, oh my God, that's quite, so cool. Like, we're, we're a few steps to go, but we're nearly self-sufficient. So oh that takes God, up a lot of time. I bet it does. My God, yeah. but save so much money now. Well, yeah, yeah, on shopping, yeah, yeah. For sure, that's so amazing, though. I've become like vegetarian, but not of my own free will. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be perfect for me, because I'm vegetarian, so it'd be great yeah. for me. But yeah, well, at least it's going to save you some money. It's certainly a lot cheaper than buying meat at the moment, so that's good. Yeah. Just think of the animals that you're saving, Kim. Think I about do. That. I've got them all. I've got them all in my back garden. Everybody's like, "Oh, I found these chickens. Do you want them?" I was like, "Okay, I'll take them." I know. It's so funny. So, how many animals do you have? Oh, I've got loads. I've got loads: chickens, ducks, geese, turkeys. Um, I had. Um, there was two goats. There was a lady that had two goats, and they was tethered to a fence, and that's where they stayed. And I was like, "Oh, what are we going to do? I, said, I can't leave them here. We need to take them home." So Ronnie's like, "Oh my god, here we go!" So I ended up with two goats. Both of them were pregnant, so I ended up with four goats. <laughs> so I had oh to find. Um, I had to find. I said, "There's a lady that um, lives not far from me, and she's got quite a few acres of land, and she's got like a herd of goats that roam around." So when there was well enough and healthy enough so I fed them all up made sure they was all nice and healthy so I re, -her I re -home them into another herd so they were all like now living their best life and so I ended up taking like loads of animals in and then I get them all nice and well and then I go find them all nice homes where they can just live their lives <laughs> but you don't none of the animals that you have on the on your like property are for eating no they're just no I don't eat no I don't know no, I can't, yeah. can't eat. I'm like, cute. That's what I mean. Like, I guess, <laughs> do you know when you hear about people who, like, you know, they have animals and then they, like, raise them and then they eat them? Yeah, I and there's quite a few people that do I, it. I'd yeah. get too attached. I'd get yeah, way you, too attached. I just couldn't do that. They, they have to not give them names. That's that's the rule of thumb. If you're going to eat them, you can't give them names. All oh, mine are names, so I can't. Oh, there you go. So you can't. Oh, fair enough. No. Well, Kim, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. I mean, I thank really hope that me. um Pole Hog will still continue to keep doing its thing because I love buying my shorts from you. Can we'll you keep um, can you just tell everybody <clears throat> where they can find you on socials, how they can buy stuff from you? Just give us all the social pages and the websites. So um anything that's custom order. So if you want to order anything that's not on our website. Find Paul Hogg on Facebook, order through there, or Instagram. Just send me a message. It'll be me that you talk to. 
um, website stuff, www.pohog.com. That's where to find us. Awesome. Go and check them out, everyone. Uh, Kim and Mr. Pohog are the loveliest, and they always make me good stuff, and they always try and turn around quicker than it says on their website. So, yeah. Always. I always really love that, yeah. I know, because it says on your website, I think it says, like, oh, it'll be with you within, like, is it 26 days or something? I'm like, 21 days. I've ever, yeah, I, was like, I don't think I've ever waited 21 days for no, shorts. No, no, but never, yeah. never. But, no, it's good that you've got that as a backup, because then it means that people are happy when it arrives early, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim, and I'll speak to Thank you Thank you for sometime. having me. Bye. Bye. Hey, bitch. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you have someone that you want on the podcast and you want me to talk to, please drop me a message on Instagram and let me know because I'm always looking for new, interesting people to talk to on this podcast. So drop me a message on Instagram at Dan Rosenpohl. And until next time, bye. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here, it's the Weekly Deal.